So welcome everybody to the Martin E. Siegel Theater Center here at the, the Graduate Center of CUNY. My name is Frank Henschker. I'm the director of the Siegel Center. Next to me is Dip Shika, who is one of our uh, PhD students, but also professor of theater at Hunter College, and uh, was the one who connected us with this, what I think is a very a unique, rare, and significant evening. We have with us a representative of uh, India, of Indian theater culture of Katakali dancing, and everybody who knows theater Great, yeah, you're right. Uh, and Love's Theater knows what, a, what an outstanding, significant global theater tradition that is. It goes back to the 1200s. And as far as I know, maybe the uh, form that has been performed unchanged for almost a thousand years. And there's nothing we really can compare. It. Many other forms we do know, no theater, others do come later. There's the uh, Shinto dancing in Japanese uh, theater, but still uh, perhaps this goes up 
go even earlier. So what we see is the earliest representation of uh, creating meaning through dance and performance of mankind. It's uh, extraordinary. And uh, uh, Manoj will be performing for us. His makeup was four hours today. I would like you to recognize that. Uh, uh, and it's a big thing also to present it not in a normal uh, a setting, but at a university. So they're really, uh, we're asking a lot uh, from the performers. And uh, Kalat Haran uh, will then uh, later on also speak with us and uh, give a, a little explanation. So the program will be 57, 58 minutes, and then we will have a short panel, and then we will open questions. And maybe, uh, Deepsi, maybe you want to say a, a few words, very short. Yeah. Um, Kaladharan has been coming to Hunter College for several years now, and when I saw one of their uh, performances a couple of years back, and my parents were also in the, in the house, I was so moved, and I thought that since Kaladharan was coming to U US, and Kaladharan is a retired professor of um, Kath Kathakali from Kalamandalam, which is the national um, uh, the center for uh, uh, performing arts. So when I found out that he was coming, I wanted to share it with our Graduate Center um, audience. So thank you. I'm not in a position to give you a detailed account of what Kathakali is all about, because we are running out of time. The performance itself is for one hour and seven minutes. And Kathakali is a South Indian classical dance theater. It's an amazing amalgam of dance, theater, music, both vocal and instrumental. And the makeup and costuming takes about four to five hours for an actor to transform himself into a Kathakali character. You know. So Manoj, who has come here, unfortunately we are not able to bring live music here. It's, it's accompanied by CD music. And Kathakali actors, Kathakali characters seldom speak on stage. The verbal acting is separated from the actors and is given over to two vocalists who sing the text of the play. And this is translated into hand gestures, stylized and realistic, and body movements and facial expressions. It involves so much of dancing, and the hand gestures are symbolic. And it's difficult for a person who is not initiated to, to appreciate, to understand the meaning of each and every hand gesture. But still, the dancing, the movements, the expressions, how he presents, presents himself on stage would be very interesting for you. And today, uh, Manoj is presenting a very unusual character in Kathakali, an Aboriginal hunter, a woodsman, a hunter, who actually sleeps in his house at the dead of night in the forest, and then he hears a sound coming from somewhere, and he wakes up. So as the curtain goes, you will see him lying uh, asleep in his hut and snoring. And then he wakes up uh, listening to this sound and he goes in search of this sound. Where does this sound come from? And he walks into the forest, deep into the forest, all alone, afraid sometimes, and he shows all these expressions and he comes across a beautiful lady. Who, whose leg is being swallowed by a python. And that's where she wails, she cries. And he kills the python, and the, the lady is uh, very much relieved, and she tells uh, the hunter that God will bless you, God will give you the gift for what you've done for you. But the hunter is not pleased. He is visibly disappointed. He says, I'm in love with you. I cannot let you go. I don't have a wife. I'm all alone, but I have a beautiful house where you can come and stay. We can get married, we can have children, we can swim in the river, we can enjoy the spring. Why don't you come with me? But this uh, lady who is actually a queen, a princess, who got married to King Nala, she had received a boon from the Lord of Heaven that if anybody tries to outrage her modesty, he will turn into ashes. So the hunter makes advances repeatedly and tells her to come with him. But then finally she prays the Lord of the heaven and the hunter turns into ashes. Unfortunately, we don't have also the main thing, the, the princess who should have been here. Uh, and uh, the hun Manoj as the hunter will show the reflections of the, of the lady who is present. And it's, it's a solo recital. He impersonates 
where all of them may be too at times. Thank you. Hope you'll be able to enjoy it. Thank you very much. Now it's time to turn off your cell phones. And if you have them, just take a moment. I do the same. There will also be a small reception afterwards, a glass of wine if you have additional questions. And um, yes, he's Hunter College, and we have a Hunter from a Katakali Theater. So thank you so much.
down and we'll start the conversation. Uh, Why is he leaving? <laughs> he's taking off the makeup and the costume. He's coming back? Yes. He's just for you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I'm scared. <laughs> Do you think it helps? <laughs> it's a process. So, um, Tell us a bit, what did we see? Sorry? What so did we see? What did we see? Uh, you mean uh, this particular excerpt? The character and the, the character is, uh, is a, as I told you before, it's an unusual character in Kathakali. It doesn't come into the mainstream of Kathakali performance with its very special makeup and costumes and the headgear. Everything is different mm -hmm. from what you usually see uh, as part of the Kathakali repertoire. And this particular character has a kind of freestyle acting. He is not very much within the discipline of the Kathakali's organic framework. He can go outside the territory. That means he can improvise. He can um, also enact things which usually do not come under the purview of the Kathakali aesthetics. Um, if we would be in India, where would we see this performance? What would be the occasion and the location and what? Kathakali has been associated with the Hindu temples of Kerala. 
So wherever festivals are there, Kathakali performances are held. In South of India, all the way. In to South Kerala. In Kerala. In Kerala. In the yeah. southwest tip, tip of the Indian subcontinent. So throughout the temples, performances are there, but formerly there were overnight performances, beginning by 8:30 uh, in the late evening and going on till next dawn. So they would be in a temple, and it would be people who come into the temple and yeah. sit down. And yeah. Yeah, and the, the devotees come spectators. And the audience stays for the entire night? Or? Yeah, usually, yeah. But now, uh, the situation has changed. Now the performances have been cut short to three hours. It begins by 6 or 6.30, goes on till 9.30. So we didn't do too bad for one hour at least. <laughs> yeah, not too bad, um, yeah. So Go uh, tell us, how, who wrote the story? How is it uh, uh, given to the next generation? How is the training? Uh, this particular st excerpt is taken from a great Kathakali play called Nalacharitam, written by a great poet. It's supreme poetic utterance, in fact. Second. And each word, supreme poetic utterance. This supreme the text, poetic? poetic utterance. 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 Uh, in which uh, the implications cannot be completely communicated by the actors. The subtext is there which is very difficult to be communicated through the hand gesture and uh, language and also expressions, movements and expressions. Could you maybe, just for the audience, give us an explanation of some of the hand gestures as translations, what they mean, if you could show us Yeah, some for instance, I can just tell you. This is tree and this is forest. This gesture comes quite often. Mm -hmm. yeah. It is repeated. Take the mic because it's my, yeah. It is repeatedly shown by the actor, tree and the forest. And uh, in the wee hours of the morning, the sun is about to rise, Lord sun. So that, uh, that symbol was, that gesture was shown by him. It was the Matsya? Matsya yeah, she was, he was comparing, the hunter was comparing the eyes of uh, this beautiful lady with that of the fish and lotus flower. The face looks like the lotus flower, which is a very neoclassical image used very much in Kathakali. Uh, Deepshika, since you are a teacher at Hunter College, and uh, so you must know about the hunters, and, uh, but also he is student here. So when was the first time you saw such a performance? What did it mean for you? You know, when we were growing up uh, in the 80s, I, I saw some excerpts on TV because that was the national television. We saw a lot of that. So but you saw it first on television? Yeah. Yeah. How old were you? Like six, seven, eight. Uh, and then uh, my first live performance was actually the Putana at Hunter. Yeah. The Putana demon. So in, the, in America. In, yeah, in America, yeah. And the Putana demon is the demon that fee comes to feed Krishna from her breast. And then uh, she actually offers poisoned milk, but Putana is a... Um, a demon, so Krishna is able to vanquish her and, uh, yeah. Krishna sucks her life out. Out of the breasts, yeah. And that's a very, clim very much like this, very climactic uh, uh, piece, yeah. So tell us a bit, where does this form of theater fit in in contemporary India? How, where, who goes, who sees it, what does it mean? So one uh, space is the temple space that is still there. And the other space is the contemporary theater space uh, where uh, dance performances, dance groups are uh, inviting perform performers to come and perform. And then of course, uh, SNA and we actually have Uttara Kulawala, she's a dance professor at Barnard, so she might be able to fill in a little bit on that too. She's a, a Sangeet Natak Academy Award winner also. So um, the SNA provides a lot of support, right? Some support. And Kerala Kalamandalam, the institution right. for imparting training and conducting performance of Kathakali, it undertakes performances. Its Kathakali troops travel everywhere and conduct performances. So this become very much secular in the sense that the space where this is performed doesn't have any religious connotations. Yeah, so that's outside the temple. Outside the temple. Yeah, no. yeah. And the Indian government does the, through ICCR, they promote these performances outside of India on, on national stages and international stages also. Yeah, it is incredible. We do not really know how the Greek temple dances looked like. We don't know how Shakespeare really was played. Uh, 
Uh, but you know, this is something we can see almost a thousand years ago with perhaps small variations, but it's truly one of the original forms of mankind. And to tell a story about a man and a woman, about hunting, about the gods, the forest. I interesting, very modern in a way that the narrator, you know, has separated the voice from the performer. Um, he's uttering and speaking and dancing movements. Uh, the music also is on stage, I think, on the performances. Mm -hmm, yeah. So um, c quite a, such an ancient concept, though beautifully uh, contemporary in a dance dramaturgy. Um, the training for Katakali is legendary. Uh, Kortowski, um, Schachner, and so many others. I think, Peter, uh, if I'm right, you trained in Katakali once. Me? Yeah, did you? <laughs> oh, you talked about it, yes, but, uh, so I thought, but, um, or in workshops inspired by that. Tell us a little bit about the um, Katakali training. training. What time does it start? How do you become a Katakali dancer? Um, ever since Kerala Kalamandalam was established, the ancient system of Gurugula disappeared. Say again? The, the ancient system of Gurugula, gurus, teacher, and student. Students stayed with the teacher and learned the art form for years apprentice, and years. Apprentice, master, yeah, yeah, apprentice yeah, system. Yeah. Yeah. Is no longer. Is no when longer. did it end? Uh, formally in 1930. By 1930, Kathakali was heading to extinction. And the founder of Kerala Kalamandalam, he thought that uh, this ancient system of training would not survive. After a thousand years almost, it yeah. changed. Yeah, actually, Kathakali is only, uh, it was originated in 17th century. But there, there were other forms also, like Kudiyatam, the traditional Sanskrit theater, which was evolved in the 10th century. Uh, but uh, then Valathol, uh, a great poet, a visionary, he, he just uh, came to the conclusion that this art form cannot survive without institutionalization. That's how Kerala Kalamandalam was founded. Since then, those who attained the age of 12 could learn at Kalamandalam and uh, continue his training for age of 8 10 to or 10 12? years. You started at 10, ten years old, 12, 12, 12. And, you, and you go like a special school, you yeah. stay overnight, yeah. it's like a soccer school. Yeah, or it's a residential, school. strictly residential school and each part of the body is trained separately. Mm -hmm. It's fine tuning of the body so that you cannot do anything else. A Kathakali actor, when he completes his course, he cannot go for any other work. This is the only thing he can do. Because the, so much of stylization has gone into his movements, his facial expressions, his hand gestures, his torso movements. So he is fit only for this. As Shekhanar says, this is his second nature. Mm -hmm. So he has to go with it. There is no other go. And so all the gestures and each part of the are body written down in books and uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. And each part of the body is trained separately. And the, the student would not know what it is all about. It's all technique, pure techniques. And finally, in a full-fledged classroom, everything is brought together. The text, the context, the emotions, the vocal music, the instrumental music, then it becomes a full-fledged performance without makeup and costumes. And then as years pass by, then the, and the spectators would realize this person would be good for female character, this actor would be good for male character, and the teachers would also identify that, uh, depending upon the body language of each actor, he is given such kind of roles. That's how Kathakali actors come alive. And they will carry on that roles for their lifetime. Yeah, they mm -hmm. have to, there is inevitably no choice. Yeah. Because it's not really possible, to be uh, uh, ra playing, like playing Rama and then all of a sudden transitioning into a Minuku character or something? Actually, that's possible depending upon the versatility of the actor. Mm, okay. like great actors like Kalamandalam Krishnanar and Gopi, they could take any roles. Mm -hmm. The male roles and the female roles and the noble, the wicked, the grotesque. But most of these actors, they specialize in certain roles. But like the original Shakespeare comes well, ma men only, this is not, no female. Uh, uh, traditionally, it has tradition. been a male bastion, but from, the from 1917 uh, onwards, a female troupe, a women's troupe emerged in Kerala. And incidentally, um, Merlin Pitko did a research on the female characterization by female actors in Kathakali. And how knowledgeable is the audience? Do they, like in baseball here, which I don't really understand, but they, this is a spider curveball or something, and they, people see it supposedly from a stadium far away, and there's a like, tiny 
tiny place. But does the audience know all the gestures and uh, the movements? And how do they know? It's a very tough, complex question. Mm -hmm. uh, because some among the spectators, they know all the subtleties of acting. The verbal acting, the movements, the expressions, the meaning of the hand gestures, the literature, the rhythm, the music. You should be master of all these, in fact, as spectator, to appreciate the art form in its entirety. But others can enjoy, can have a certain kind of enjoyment, like enjoying the music a little bit, seeing the grotesque characters and the wicked characters when they yell and roar like the, uh, the aboriginal uh, hunter. That, is, um, that can be appreciated even by, the, by a person who is not very initiated. Like me. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I was going to ask. So, 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 so yeah. So, um, but how does the audience learn about it? They just their grand, their parents tell them, the Actually, grandparents, or how how does they know? How do they know? Uh, for centuries, they actually sat with their grandfathers and grandmothers who explained to them the stories, a little bit of the hand gestures, the expressions. So and in all. families, they would reenact the story, and then you would go to see the professional. Exactly. exactly. Almost like house music, and then you go to see exactly. the professional chamber music yeah. orchestra. Yeah. But now, uh, there are various ways in which uh, uh, people can go and appreciate this because uh, lecture demonstrations are held. Uh, demonstrations help a lot for people to understand and appreciate this art form. Such classes are held everywhere, far and wide, mm -hmm. in Kerala and outside. Um, very often, t television has been the death of local uh, theater traditions. You could see it fast all the time, and people don't uh, want to see it anymore. How, how is it in India? Do is it shown on national television still, and people still go to see the performance, or has it been almost the end of an art form that is supposed, normally, I guess, supposed to be live, in person, in a temple, perhaps even? So how is the relation between... Uh, the contemporary audience, you mean? Yeah. The contemporary audience is a, is a mix, yeah. I'm not in a position, I'm not competing to comment on the, on the sensitivity of the contemporary audience. Of course, there are some who are very initiated and who understand uh, the nuances of acting and dancing in Kathakali. But uh, for most uh, of the audience, it's a kind of general appreciation. So is it every day on television or just on the high holidays or how? how Televisions do not uh, present these programs more no. often. Yeah, yeah. Not, not as no, much not as Not much, they yeah. They just give once in a while because uh, when, they, when there is some news uh, value, then, mm -hmm. they, then they would give it, otherwise they just ignore. But Kathakali has survived always. It's a dynamic art form. It has withstood the test of time because it can uh, change it itself. Uh, it can, it's not a conservative form in the first place. According to the changes that take place in the society, Kathakali also evolves. So that's why of all the classical art forms in Kerala, Kathakali is the most popular, like Bharatanatyam in Chennai. Mm -hmm. But in, in, in essence, it's also it, it's a way to explain the divine texts, to tell the stories of the gods. So Diva, the Shiva, who is a dancer, a divine dancer in a way by himself, so it's used to explain as the, the medieval Christian mystery plays yeah. where very often the Catholic Church said, you know, you, if you cannot understand the Bible, then uh, you should not have, you should, wouldn't need a dancer to show you what it's all about. But I think in Indian culture or in Indian religion, it's a fantastic symbiosis, I think, of movement, dance, and yeah. Uh, yeah. the unexplicable, in the Jungian sense, as you said, this stuff you cannot even explain, but the audience receives uh, something yeah. of that shining yeah. Yeah. divine uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, presence. How, how, was, how when did you see your very first Katakali performance? Me. Mm -hmm. My father was associated with the temples. He was an administrator of the temples. So I grew up in an atmosphere uh, in which Kathakali was very popular. So I moved with the actors and the musicians, and I have an inherent taste for music. So if you have a taste for music, then of course you can go into all this, in all the Indian dances and theater forms. So that, uh, and, and later on then, you cultivate that, because you are constantly moving with such kind of an actors and such kind of an atmosphere and culture, then you can easily get into it. And before we go to audience questions, so how many plots, how many stories, how many uh, uh, variations, of course, the variation was in the variation, but how, how many are there, how, like Shakespeare plays or Goethe plays, or how many are there um, that people go and see? 
Yeah, Kathakali plays have traditionally been composed from the great Indian epics, the Ramayana, the Mahabharata and the Bhagavata. Bhagavata, which tells a life story of Lord Krishna. Ramayana tells a story of Lord Sri Rama and Mahabharata tells about the eternal rivalry between the two branches of the family, the Pandavas and the Kauravas. Apart from this, Kathakali has also adapted from other uh, epics, yeah. Like um, King Lear has been made into a Kathakali performance. It was made into a Kathakali performance in the late 1980s or so. And then uh, Homer's Iliad and Odyssey were made into Kathakali. Rustam and Sorab was made into a Kathakali play. And like this, so many, but the, the problem is that this particular, any classical dance form or theatre form has a format has a form. And this form is the most dominant. And whatever is the theme, the form remains. And because of that, whether you perform a play from Mahabharata, a story from Mahabharata or Ramayana or from Greek epics, it doesn't matter. The form determines it. And if you change the form, then the art loses its identity. So that is one of the biggest constraints of this art form and also its uh, strength, I would say. So it's like a language, like a piano, right. where you have the certain notes exactly. are clear and you combine them. Um, we still wait for, um, for the dancer or performer to come, but maybe we go out right away. Michael, if you could put up a little bit of light to the audience and uh, we take some questions, maybe say briefly who you are and well, my name question is, uh, or comment. Phil Beichman, um, um, very revelatory and exciting. Uh, event uh, for me, and I'm sure for uh, everyone here. Uh, I was curious about uh, our theater in the West, America, other places, very um, lately seems to be more and more concerned with social, political issues like uh, gender, immigration, race, and so forth. Now, India is not, uh, India is not lacking in those issues. I was wondering if there's. Can I? Shall I continue? Yeah. I was wondering if there's like, a, um, if uh, if it touch if uh, this uh, form of theater can uh, touches on issues like caste, uh, untouchables, uh, the uh, forest, uh, the civil sort of quasi civil war in the forests, or the Naxalite rebellion, or uh, the what seems to be a reactionary um, Hindu um, government, or the. Uh, oppression of Muslims or the annihilation of Kashmir. That's a mouthful. But at any rate, I was curious about that. Uh, I think uh, f when it comes to the traditional performing arts uh, and its dominant uh, form and its disciplined uh, movements and expressions, these socialist issues uh, cannot come into it, in fact. If you are uh, taking it as a discourse in this form, it will not have the desired effect. Because these are social issues which are to be addressed to a larger audience. And uh, Kathakali and other classical forms address only a minuscule uh, audience. Only a small part of the population uh, is interested in it. So if you have social larger issues, why should you choose this form? Why don't you go for other media? There are so many other media that can express these issues more powerfully, much more emphatically than classical dance and theatre. That's my, This is my personal view as a critic, as a person who has been associated with this for long. Everywhere I went, I, uh, I had to undergo this, uh, I had to face these questions. Thank you for yeah. raising the question, but these social issues, political issues, all these issues that are very sensitive, this can be raised in other platforms. But as, not as, as classical -like ballet category. most probably would not, uh, you know, comment on um, on climate change or on on, <laughs> on, on on things like this. But it's a good question. Mm -hmm. uh, good question. Since we have uh, a performer here, so Why first not? of all, congratulations is one of the most beautiful things we have shown in over in all these years here. You understand it? Yeah. yeah. So again, congratulations. <laughs> How did it feel for you to? Uh, present your work in this space. 
Can you speak in the mic? Because because yeah. I am good feel because uh, good response from you everybody, <laughs> all of you. <laughs> so good good feel me. Yeah. So yes, a very good feeling about presenting the performance here. Yeah, this ambience. And so, how many of the roles of Kali does he perform? How many of the characters is he? Um, does he have in his repertoire? He performs uh, a wide range of characters, in fact. Give us a number. The heroes, the anti-heroes, Ravana, Duryodhana, then uh, Sri Rama, uh, King Nala, Bhima, Arjuna, Yudhishthira, all these roles. And of course, all these unusual characters like the Aboriginal hunter, the uh, monkey god Hanuman. Monkey god yeah, Hanuman is also one of his uh, specializations. So like in Commedia dell'arte, he has a repertoire of characters, 10, 20, he can yeah. play at any moment, any time, yeah. and get yeah. into costume yeah. work. It's all uh, rehearsed hundred times, a thousand times, and it's all there in his mind. The moment he comes on stage and when the music comes, everything, all the techniques come to him. There was a big improvisational element today, right? Right? Yes, you yes, were improvising yes. a lot, yeah. right? Yeah. So many things improvised. Yeah, right. yeah. I, I Especially the last Take one. Take the microphone. Yeah. Sorry. Especially the last one. Three babies. Yes. 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 <laughs> <It's> <laughs> <my> <laughs> on the spot. <laughs> yeah. And the Navarasa. Um, uh, I mean yeah. the Vatsala. The uh, one of, yes, one yes. of the Rasas. Uh, is yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. So we have one audience member who, since a long time, wanted to express <laughs> her feelings uh, <laughs> for the performer. Yes. Now we are recording it and. Uh, I was very moved by the performance. I was aware, as I listened to the music and watched the movement, that it was very, very tightly related, the specificity of the steps with the music, so that there was a specific thing done to the ta-ra-ta, -ta or, or this, or whatever it was. So was that so tightly choreographed that it is constantly repeated with that dance? That's that dance. Oh. Yeah, you are same person, correct. Oh. Uh, but there is a, if, if we have live take, musicians. Take the microphone. Yeah. If we have live musicians, there is a call and response aspect to this performance, which we don't get to see with recorded music. So they might do, they might play that sound, uh, that that musical um, arrangement, a couple of times, and he might keep doing it a few times. Spontaneously. Yeah, 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 yeah. The dancer would respond to the da 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 da. Yeah. The yeah. So the oh. call and response. Yeah. The details can change, of course, but basically it would remain the same. If, so maybe if one or two questions, uh, one and then two. You first. Thank you so much for your performance, very delightful. Um, you said that uh, Kathakali, we do a lot of uh, perform uh, scenes from Mahabharata and Ramayana. They are very, very long, so do you perform all the stories, the sub-stories and all of that, or do you pick, and if so, how do you pick? Which ones? No, actually, the, there have been plays composed from Ramayana. Eight plays have been composed from Ramayana, and that gave birth to Ramanatam, the dancing the life story of Rama, from which Kathakali was evolved later, when uh, stories from Mahabharata came into being. So it's a long history, and only select plays are performed, and certain characters uh, Kathakali gives importance to, like for instance, the uh, actors who come as gods or goddesses in Kathakali do not have much to do. <laughs> Whereas anti-heroes, they dominate the Kathakali stage. When Ravana comes on stage, the top-ranking artist plays this particular character. Whereas the children come as gods and kill this demon. Uh, if Rama is played by a junior uh, artist. Uh, maybe the fourth year student learning at Kalamantalam, he would be the, he would be taking the role of Rama and finally kills Ravana. That's a very unimportant scene in Kathakali. Kathakali uh, always stresses, uh, it's a very special characteristic of Kerala's aesthetic culture. 
all the anti heroes are given uh, all powers to dominate on stage so the, all the subtleties of acting and dancing the vigorous dancing of uh, the character tandava as we call that comes very much alive when a character like ravana comes on stage when he explains his own stories as a solo recite and and i i guess like in biblical stories uh, there are excerpts are performed like the birth of christ or the crucifixion and it's been played out so it's not always the entire bible you would also perform it any um uh, in any uh, moments with drama human yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. so uh, one more here and then we'll slowly have to wrap up um thank you for the bottom of my heart um i'm intimately familiar with the po 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 sound because i heard it throughout my this vocalization throughout my childhood my maternal grandmother was born in 1900 on a greek island and i heard this frequently during the course of a day and it was a sound of mild to severe disapprobation depending on how it was said <laughs> <laughs> there was no shrill version however <laughs> sound he made yeah the pop pop the pop pop boy uh, actually kathakali characters are not allowed to speak or uh, utter anything on stage yeah. even making sounds yelling or so but there are exceptions a few characters like the aboriginal hunter they have they have been given the freedom to yell groan then make noises so he this is also a little bit stylized this may not resemble the actual uh, speaking or the sound or the voice of the hunter but it's slightly stylized imitating the the calls of the hunters for the birds right the yeah animals. yeah right yeah. exactly and uh, maybe uh, as a closing statement uh, uh, if you uh, something you would like us to know about uh, uh, the work of katakali or the performance what it means to you personally <laughs> നമ്മുടെ നാട്ടില് ഭാഷ അറിയുന്നുണ്ടെങ്കിലും അവിടെ കാണുന്നവരൊരു ഇതുണ്ട് അവിടെ ഭാഷ അറിയില്ലെങ്കിൽ അവർ കൃത്യമായിട്ട് മഹാഭാരത അറിയില്ലെങ്കിൽ കൃത്യമായിട്ട് അവര് റെസ്പോണ്ട് ചെയ്യുന്നുണ്ട് നമ്മുടെ ചെറിയ ഇമ്പ്രവൈസേഷൻ ആയിട്ട് അവർ റെസ്പോണ്ട് ചെയ്യുന്നുണ്ട് അപ്പോൾ അവർക്ക് കൂടുതൽ കഥ അറിഞ്ഞ് ഒന്നുകൂടെ അവർക്ക് അവിടെ മനസ്സിലാക്കാൻ കഴിയുമെന്ന് എനിക്ക് തോന്നുന്നു ഈ ഓഡിയൻസ് പ്രത്യേകിച്ച് വട്ട് ഈ ഫീൽസ് ഈസ് ദാറ്റ് ബാക്ക് ഇൻ ഇന്ത്യ പീപ്പിൾ അണ്ടർസ്റ്റാൻഡ് ദ സ്റ്റോറി ദ ആർ ഫെമിലിയർ വിത്ത് ദ ടെക്സ്റ്റ് ദ കോൺടെക്സ്റ്റ് ആൻഡ് ദ കാൻ അപ്രീഷിയേറ്റ് ദ ആർട്ട് ഫോം മച്ച് മോർ ബട്ട് ഈവൻ വിത്തൌട്ട് നോയിങ് ഓൾ ദീസ് ദ ഓഡിയൻസ് ഹി ഹാഡ് ടുഡേ ദ വെർ ഏബിൾ ടു അപ്രീഷിയേറ്റ് ദ സെറ്റിലിറ്റീസ് ഓഫ് ദ മൂവ്മെൻറ്റ്സ് ആൻഡ് ദ ആക്ടിങ് ആൻഡ് ദ ഡാൻസിങ് ആൻഡ് if they know a little more about the theme the text and the context uh, he is uh, he, uh, he he says uh, they will certainly be it will be an engrossing experience for them so they will all come to kathakali yeah to so, a greater extent yeah. thank you very much thank you thank you, thank you. so um We all now do know a little bit more about Katakali and about that great tradition of mankind theater and performance and really thank you for taking your time and please yeah go and see performances wherever they might be in the Can city it's stunning to see him again mm -hmm. no um, is he performing again somewhere soon no or? actually tomorrow we have a workshop at uh, bernard at bernard so maybe you, you see if you can get your way to the workshop but uh, uh <laughs> if you can do it but again thank you so much and again this was a spectacular performance thank you so much so we're going to have a little reception here and we have a glass of wine and a, a, a little thing so stay here with us again thank you all for coming and in two weeks we have a great program on circus most probably the most significant program on contemporary circus in the americas the entire thank you